Today's video topic is, should you get a sex change? Many people are unsure whether they would be happier being male or female. And in this video, I would like to give some good answers. Now in this video, I'm primarily going to be focusing on male to female uh, transsexuals. And this is not because I'm sexist. I know a lot more about male to female transsexuality than female to male. So uh, I, I just don't feel like I know enough uh, to talk about uh, female to male. Now, I think the one thing no one really educates you on too well about uh, transsexuality is that so many transsexuals look really off. If you have gender identity disorder, you probably look at a lot of photos or look at yourself in the mirror a lot, and uh, this is how your perception of how you look is primarily formed. However, uh, what you really need to do is you need to be standing side by side with the uh, ideal type of person you would want to look like in order to understand the differences of anatomy because in a photo you're not really comparing yourself uh, directly next to anything so your perception of how you actually look can become very distorted over time. Another major problem is in schools their philosophical education is very stupid and they will teach you lies such as effort makes you win, if you try hard enough you can achieve anything, you know you gotta always positively think. So when you combine that with a unclear um, self-image of a person, a person can see themselves being very beautiful in the opposite gender when in reality they might end up uh, looking nothing close to what they would ideally want to look like. Now while I think a lot of people don't care if they look perfect, I think um, if someone is willing to go so far as to change their sex, they really care about how they look and if they're going to do that, they want to look pretty fucking good. So let's get into a bit of depth. What can surgery change and what can surgery not change and do you want to get any surgery? Now if you want to uh, look ideal, I think you're most likely going to need uh, some type of surgery uh, in the face because uh, male face and female face looks very different. There's a lot of uh, anatomical differences. The gap between your uh, lip and nose is different in men. The shape of the nose, uh, men have a broader nose. Um, the uh, brow bone, I don't know, if, I don't really have one here, but you can kind of see it. This, this bone is more pronounced in men. Um, the big one is the chin. Uh, women have, you know, like 90 degree chins like this. If I fold up my goatee here, you can see a bit better, but I have a pretty, a pretty flat chin. One of the first things you have to look into here is shoulder and rib cage size. And I think this is one of the major differences between male and female anatomy, which is what makes a lot of transsexuals look off. And this is probably one of the most important differences too, because uh, you can't modify this all that much. And uh, how much you can shrink your rib cage, I think there's gonna be a strict limitation to how much you can actually do safely. You can't really uh, do much about this. So for example, if you were to starve yourself, you're not gonna uh, turn your rib cage into the shape you want. It's gonna become really kind of flat and you'll see that uh, their width, their, their shoulders are still very wide. It's still very masculine, but it becomes, uh, the rib cage becomes uh, flatter. Another major difference you might notice is hands. I don't think you can just see obviously by looking at my hand, but when you compare you know, women's hands and men's hands uh, side by side, and same with the feet, you'd notice there's a lot of major differences there. Now I think it's okay to do a couple surgeries, but when you're pretty much having to modify every single part on your body completely, you know, at that point I would start to advise against transsexuality. I think you should start off with a relatively um, androgynous base anatomy. If you just put, you know, a long hair and a dress on a guy, 
well, there's like a 20% of people who are going to say, you look like a girl, and they'll, they'll genuinely believe you're a girl, right, because they're very ignorant. And it's important to understand if you base your decisions uh, by opinions like these, you might end up looking off. So again, you have to ask yourself, do you want to pass as a woman or do you want to be a beautiful woman? Because I think most people want to be beautiful when they uh, change their gender. So I would say uh, transsexuality is a good choice, um, anatomically speaking, for two groups of people. And these are people who are um, naturally effeminate and uh, those who are naturally androgynous or neotenous. Now that I think about it, um, what makes someone androgynous is simply being neotenous. And for those of you who don't know, uh, neoteny is the retention of juvenile traits in an adult. If you're naturally effeminate, then it's probably the easiest, as you don't actually have to do anything unless you want to change your uh, genitalia. And uh, if you're naturally neotenous, then you're kind of like the Pokemon Ditto in that you can pass for a whole range of things. A young boy's body is a lot more similar to a girl or a woman's body than an adult male is uh, to a girl or woman's body. So for example, Asians would probably be the best at getting a sex change because Asians are the most naturally neotenous race. Now it's a lot more complicated than this and there's a lot more features to human anatomy that I didn't include. Those are just some of the major ones that I've noticed. Um, and I think that uh, it shouldn't just be about whether you psychologically you know, uh, want to be the opposite uh, sex, right? I think uh, it's also uh, you have to take into account the actual feasibility. Check out your anatomical feasibility before you make a decision. Find a girl who has the exact type of body you're looking for, you know, and then compare your hands. Put your hands over her hands. Put your feet next to her feet, right? Compare your butt, your hip. Compare your rib cage uh, diameter. Compare your shoulder width. Compare your facial structure, right? Compare all these things in careful detail before making any kind of decision. Next, I would like to look at some of the psychology of uh, wanting a sex change because some of the psychological reasons are good and some of them are not good and I don't think you should change for these reasons. I think the first major reason um, a lot of men especially want to change their gender is because they feel inferior to women. Uh, they see the whole, uh, oh, women are precious, let's caress and love this person while let's uh, be a total asshole to this guy to turn him into a man, right? And I don't think that's a good reason to uh, change your gender. I think that's a good reason to attack gender roles. I think that's a good reason to encourage a more tolerant society. I think that's a good reason to uh, get into men's rights, right? A lot of men want their feelings to have importance and not be worthless garbage that people trample over. Another common bad reason I find people change their gender is because of this belief that if you have feelings of wanting to be a woman that these feelings aren't going to go away. So while I'm not saying that your gender identity crisis is just a phase, I'm saying it could be just a phase. In some people it is. Now I think another common bad reason a lot of people might change their sexual orientation is because of the belief that if you have gender identity disorder, the only way you'll ever be happy is if you uh, do change your sex. And I don't think that's uh, true. Uh, so for example, I would definitely be happier being a heterosexual female than being a heterosexual male. Um, but it's not like sex is all there is to life, right? Um, there's many other emotions out there, and I think uh, you shouldn't base your entire life around just one uh, emotional need. Another common bad reason, I think, is uh, your sexual orientation. Just because you're gay, it doesn't make sense to become a woman. There's plenty of men who will like you uh, as a man. There's many, many gay men who would want to have sex with you, so I think that's not a good reason, unless, of course, you know, you're already 99% androgynous and changing is little to no effort. I think another common psychological reason uh, someone might want to change their gender is because they want to be perceived as cute and, uh, you know, loved and adored in that sort of uh, sense. There's no reason you can't be cute or beautiful or uh, adorable as a male. 
Um, society kind of glamorizes uh, female beauty, but this doesn't mean that male beauty doesn't exist. Again, I think over time as society becomes more tolerant and intelligent, um, ideas like this will be pretty normal. But to many men, it's very hard for them to associate um, men with being cute. And whenever they look in a mirror and uh, see themselves, they just think, I wouldn't want to you know, fondle and caress that. And they can never truly feel adorable, even though they might very well be. Now, I would say there's a good chance you can actually uh, change your perception of this and learn to see yourself as a cute male. However, I think a lot of people just can't bring their minds to associate maleness with beauty or cuteness or any kind of uh, emotion you would derive from looking at a female. And I think uh, people like this are good candidates uh, psychologically for wanting to change. And if uh, looking a certain way is absolutely necessary in order to feeling a certain way, then I think that these are uh, good reasons to want to change. Now, with this topic, it's very hard to get a sensible decision. Uh, if you talk to someone conservative, they're going to be like, God made man man, right? And if you talk to someone liberal, they're going to be like, do the opposite of whatever the conservative guy says, right? So uh, you get these two extremes, and I'm, I'm trying to give you a very uh, fair, neutral perspective. If you like this video, share it, subscribe, and if you have video request of your own, leave in the comments below. I do every video request ever. In my next video it will be a video request. Logical Morality is a totally non-profit charity. We do not accept donations and we do not enable AdSense. So I make absolutely nothing from any of my videos. I just waste a lot of my time.